Choices always were a problem for you. What you need is someone strong to guide you. I'm Max, this is Patch, and today we're going to be doing cross-site scripting shell and tunnel. Um, this basically allows you to open a back door between you and the victim's browser. Um, it's a little bit different than your standard cross-site scripting because it opens up, up a connection between you and that victim. This allows you to run several different attacks. Um, some of the key features to the cross-site scripting shell is that it puts the, the victim to basically a virtual environment by using the iframe. And uh, so even if they click on different links or links out of the page, um, you'll still have the, you still, the victim will still be affected. So you'll be able to continue to uh, send it to commands and control the browser. And also uh, the tunnel allows you to bypass like uh, authentication and IP restrictions. So let's get into it. All right, you can easily find the source code for this, uh, for this shell online. Uh, we're just going to do a quick group, uh, Google search. And you can, the first link here is going to allow us to download the source code. I'm just going to download it here and unpack it. Alright, so now that we have it downloaded here, you can see that it has both the tunnel and the shell. And uh, this shell is actually written in ASP, and the, uh, the back end or the, or the database for it is written in MS Access. So it's pretty easy to use and install. Alright, so what we're going to need to do now that we have, we have the cross-site scripting shell, uh, we're going to need to find some, somewhere we can host it. Um, it needs to support ASP. So we use 7host. It's a good free hosting company that actually allows ASP. As you can see, we already have uh, an account set up. Right, so now that we have our host all set up, uh, we're going to need to configure the files a little bit. Um, if we open up the cross-site scripting shell.asp and go down to the server configuration, uh, the first one that you have to change is going to be the location of your server. So if you just copy and paste in uh, the URL to the location of your server, that's all you have to do. Now, also you want to take note of the other configurations below that. This is just if you change the other um, dependent files that the server runs off of. So if you fi uh, change the names of the files, you've got to change them here as well. Also something else to note is that you can see here that we're using Notepad++ to do all of our editing. Uh, it's just a really easy, simple text editor with a few like key features, but it's not Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver will just like mess everything up, so we recommend not using that to uh, edit any of the files. Alright, next we're going to have to change the database file. Just go into the admin uh, directory and go down to the db.asp. Um, this is where we're going to have to put in the path of our database. This is a little bit trickier to find than uh, just pasting in the URL. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to write a small script um, that we're going to upload to the site that will give us the path of our database. As you can see, the command is really simple. Um, it's just respond.write, server.matpath, and the path is the current directory and this will uh, output the location of that database. So we're just going to save it as you know, whatever.asp and then we're going to upload it to the site. We also recommend using uh, an FTP client. Uh, this one right here we're using Flash FXP. Uh, there's tons of them out there free. Uh, it just helps maintain a good connection with the server. Just log in with our credentials and then we're going to go ahead and upload that blah.asp just so we can find out the location of that database. 
So just go ahead to our web browser and type in that blah.asp and as you can see it will output the location of our database. We're just going to go ahead and copy that and paste it into the database configuration. But be sure to leave the, uh, the, the directory and location of that shell, uh, the access database. Alright, now that we have that all configured, uh, we're going to go ahead and remove that blah.asp and we're going to upload everything to the site. Alright, now that we have everything uploaded there, all you have to do is type admin after your URL and it will take you to your login screen. Uh, where you can go ahead and log in. Now, by default, the login password is Woot. Uh, you can change that in your database.asp where we place the location of our database. Right. Now that we've logged in, you can see that uh, it's all up and running. And that's pretty much it for the installation of the, uh, the cross-site scripting shell. And Patch is going to take over and show you how to use it. All right, before we get started here, we want to test to make sure everything's working properly with the cross-site shipping shell. The shell comes with a, a sample victim, so you just can test it. If you go to it in your browser and look at the source, you'll see a piece of script that basically injects the cross-site shipping shell, which allows you to take over the victim's browser. In a normal attack, uh, the attacker would inject this piece of script using a cross-site scripting vulnerability. And as you can see there, it's not configured properly because it doesn't have the right location of the cross-site scripting shell. So all we need to do is change that to our URL. Just open up the default.asp in the sample underscore victim folder and scroll down and just paste in your uh, website's URL. And uh, just save it and upload it. Alright, we'll just refresh the page and go back to the admin console. You'll see our browser show up under the victims table. And if you close the infected page, that you'll see um, our browser drop out of the victims table dynamically. The victims table will dynamically update itself as new victims come in. And uh, it seems like everything's working properly, so uh, we can start the attack. The cross site scripting shell works by setting up a cross-site scripting channel which is basically an AJAX application that can obtain commands and send back responses. For an attacker to enable this cross-site scripting shell, he or she needs to inject the cross-site scripting shell's JavaScript reference, which I showed you before, which was that basically that script which had the source pointing to the uh, cross-site scripting shell.asp. And you do this with a cross-site scripting attack. Uh, it can either be a persistent one or a non-persistent one. And if you need more information on cross-site scripting attacks, uh, I suggest watching our 13th episode. And when a victim views the page that's infected, the attacker will gain control of the victim's browser and will be able to send commands to the victim. And as you can see here in this picture, there's three parts to the cross-site scripting shell. There's a server-side part that coordinates the cross-site shipping shell between the attacker and the victim. The second part is the client side written in JavaScript, which is loaded into the victim's browser and is responsible for receiving and processing the commands. And the final part is the cross-site scripting administrator console that we showed you before, which will allow the attacker to send commands to the cross-site scripting server, which is in turn sent to the victim. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is find a cross-site scripting vulnerability on a web page that we want to attack. Uh, if you remember back in episode 13, we found a non-persistent cross-site scripting attack in the form search function. We'll just use that vulnerability for our cross-site scripting shell. And we're just going to log in here as 